Hello, Rick off here. Welcome to video number 20 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. It has now been a week since my last video was posted and I thought that I would take this opportunity to provide a video update for everyone because I know there are a lot of people interested out there in learning uh, what's new in the project. So, to get this started, let me just zoom in a little bit on the wheel. Uh, what you will notice, perhaps, is that I have a new wheel mounted. I've done away with the bent up rusty old wheel that I previously had on the apparatus. And I've mounted a new uh, rear bike wheel with a, a 3 8 inch axle. Uh, this has heavier duty bearings than what was previously on there. That uh, it was a 5 16 axle previously and uh, the bearings were quite bad on that. Very noisy and rough. But this is brand new and um, it revolves quite nicely and truly, uh, you know, without having the lopsided run out that the previous wheel had. So this should work out much better. And as I zoom in here, you're going to notice that uh, in between the magnets and the magnet groups, I've inserted uh, polyethylene space maintainers. And really the only purpose of these, actually they do have two purposes. The main purpose is to, pr to provide a uh, space that maintains the actual spacing between each magnet uh, in, in a perfect alignment at all times. And uh, these spacers are quarter inch thick, the same as the magnets. And... Um, three-quarter inch wide. They're made from a uh, quarter inch by three-quarter inch wide uh, polyethylene bar stock. And I've cut these out into um, so that they're slightly wedged shaped. Uh, they're actually five-eighths of an inch wide at the uh, outside of the wheel, at the outside perimeter and uh, one sixteenth of an inch less than that at the inside perimeter of the rim. So, uh, in being wedge-shaped like this, they, uh, they fit into the magnet array perfectly and uh, correspond to the actual curvature of the rim so that the magnets are aligned correctly. Now there'd be uh, 11 of these spacers uh, for each group. And just come back out from this view a little bit. You can see there's uh, 11 spacers for that group. And as I spin the wheel around a little bit, uh, you'll see that each group has the same amount of magnets and the same amount of spacers. Now, uh, let me just show a, a view of uh, one of the spacers up a little closer. You can see the um, wedge shape, I think. That's all that is, just a piece of polyethylene. Okay, and um, a little bit better view now of the wheel and uh, you can see the larger diameter shaft of the wheel and of course this has heavier duty bearings in it the smaller wheel had uh, it wasn't a smaller wheel it was uh, they're both 26 inch wheels uh, or so called 26 inch actually the uh, proper diameter of the wheel is 22 and 5 eighths inches 
it's simply called a 26 inch wheel because it would take a 26 inch tire but the wheel itself is only 22 and 5 eighths inches in diameter now on top of the uh, magnets and spacers I'm going to be laying down a um, circular uh, timing track base and um, let me just stop the camera for a moment and I'll show you a view of the uh, base now this is a view of the uh, clear polycarbonate base uh, that I'll be using for the timing track and this is a quarter inch material quarter inch thickness and the ring itself is three and three quarters inches in width and in diameter it would be 28 and 5 eighths inches now I've cut this uh, 28 and 5 eighths inch diameter ring from a piece of um, quarter inch polycarbonate sheeting uh, that was 24 inches square and uh, of course that uh, seems unlikely at first thought uh, because how could you get a 28 and 5 8 inch ring from a 24 inch square but if you look very closely you'll notice that uh, the ring is actually made up from four separate pieces now the ring although it is uh, made of clear polycarbonate it looks white at this time and that is simply because both sides of the polycarbonate material are covered with a um, with a white paper sheeting uh, and this is simply to protect the uh, polycarbonate surface uh, while it's being machined so once I have this applied to the wheel uh, the paper will be removed and it, it will look entirely clear and the reason I chose the uh, clear polycarbonate uh, even though it's an expensive uh, material I chose this uh, simply for the sake of the videos and uh, photos that I'm using to document my build and uh, this uh, helps people to actually see what lies underneath and um, you know, makes everything much more accessible to the viewers uh, in the, by the same token, I'll also be using clear polycarbonate for the um, uh, some of the other aspects of the build, and uh, this will make the viewing much easier in the videos. Now, in this view, you see that I have taken the polycarbonate ring and applied it to the wheel. It's uh, aligned at the position where it will be mounted to the wheel and uh, to aid in this alignment process I used bar magnets on top of the ring and uh, this holds the ring nicely in place uh, for adjustment and alignment uh, now that it is aligned properly I'll be uh, drilling down through the polycarbonate through the um, uh, spacers and through the rim and then attaching the polycarbonate ring to the rim with number 832 nylon screws and uh, the screws will be uh, held on the other side of the rim with uh, nylock nuts okay so this uh, this will be a nice strong sturdy attachment and uh, this will serve as the base for the uh, timing and track. Uh, I see we're almost out of time now so I'm going to say goodbye for this video and thanks for watching. I'll be along again shortly with a new video.